Please rise. We sing our opening hymn as the casket is processing into the uh, sanctuary. Hymn 744 in your hymnals, Amazing Grace. We'll follow as it is printed there. Uh, welcome to uh, Trinity on this day as we mourn in hope to, uh, of Ruth's, Ruth's passing, in hope of resurrection to life everlasting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, Ruth was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all his sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, 
and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to you, the Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Ruth and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 40. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans, from Romans chapter 5. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that sufferings produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God chose his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies... We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Please stand. If we have died with Christ, we shall also live with him. If we are faithful to the end, we shall reign with him. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. At the time Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heaven laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
may be seated as we sing our, our hymn of the day. My hope is built on nothing less. 575 in your hymnals. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and God's comfort to you who mourn Ruth's passing. Six months from now, the whole world will celebrate again one of the greatest days in human history. Certainly the greatest day of the last century. On September 1, in the Western Hemisphere, or September 2 in Japan, where it was formalized, we'll reach the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II, 1945. A war that Ruth and her husband Ed knew well. Peace. Of course, that peace left millions, perhaps, 60 million people dead, including over 400,000 Americans and 45,000 Canadians, many of whom are buried in Europe or the Pacific in cemeteries marked by rows and rows of white crosses. It used to be that many such grave markers bore the initials R.I.P. for the Latin Equisicat in pace, meaning the same initials in English, rest in peace. Words written 
and spoken on the dead. Is that really peace? Can there be peace when someone lies in the grave? Where the death is that comes violently in war or peacefully in, in one's own bed like it came for Ruth? What about while we live? Since the world never lives in peace, just look at the news, can we? Can we live in peace today as we mourn the death of a loved one? In today's epistle, Paul's words to the Romans follows on the previous chapters, where he laid the case that we were among the dead, dead in our trespasses and sins. Twice Paul states that apart from Jesus, we have no hope and can expect only eternal death. No resting in peace for you and me without Jesus. In chapter 2, Paul announces, For all who have sinned without the law will also perish without the law, and all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. And again, Paul teaches us that there is no distinction in chapter 3, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The result is death. Now here in our text, Paul continues to describe how desperate we were. We were still weak, he says in verse, verse 6. There's never a good time to be weak. Weak in sin, weak in moral fortitude, weak in faith. That pretty much describes you and me. As Paul goes on to say, we were still sinners in verse 8. And we know that's true, isn't it? Still true, we still sin. If you look into the mirror of God's law, we realize our trespasses. Yes, we know we're still weak, still sinners, but it gets worse. Paul says we weren't just weak, we weren't just sinners, we were enemies of God enemies of God. How can we be enemies? But God is so nice. Isn't he the big guy upstairs? The doting uncle that gives you daily bread and, and, and breath? It's hard to imagine being an outright screaming in your face enemy of God. Just look at the crowd in front of Pontius Pilate, screaming, crucify him, crucify him. But we didn't never do that, would we? Enemies of God? Yes, we're at war. The whole world has been at war with God ever since Adam and Eve. Enemies. No buddies that occasionally step on each other's toes. Not allies who occasionally disagree about foreign policy. Not neutral nations who may not totally be on board, but are generally sympathetic to the cause. No, enemies, says Paul. Every one of our sins put us at war with God. By this point you realize there was a real problem between the holiness of God and the sinfulness of your flesh, your deeds, your thoughts. Our sins mean war. Our indifference isn't neutrality, it's opposition. Jesus says, whoever is not with me is against me. That's an enemy of God. No rest for an enemy. But, Paul says, while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Despite our weaknesses, Jesus became weak for us in death. To see in Scripture the mighty Lord and Savior sweat blood and stumble down the street with a cross on his torn back and then his weak hands and feet nailed to the cross. What wondrous love is that? By doing so at the exact right time, Jesus wrested from the devil the keys of death and now he holds them in his strong resurrected hand. You are died for by Jesus. Ruth was died for by Jesus. Weak and ungodly, yes. 
but forgiven. Washed in the peace-giving blood of Jesus. And, and stand strong by his grace and strength in his word. And as if he could preach enough, not, couldn't preach enough good news, Paul continues, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, for you, for Ruth. While you were weak, Jesus' death became your death in baptism. While you were still a sinner, Jesus made you who were a lost and condemned person, made you a saved, acquitted child of God through baptism. Ruth did nothing. You did nothing. Have done nothing to be saved. That point is clear. You were too weak and a sinner. That isn't a great resume to get a job done yourself. But Jesus takes what is crooked, what is wrong, what is not strong, makes it right, makes you justified, declares you strong and redeemed in him. Is that not a peaceful message? One that can give you rest, rest today as we mourn, and rest in the worst of times in life. Yes, we weren't just weak, we weren't just sinners. We were enemies of God. At world war, with God. Yet, out of great love for you and me, for Ruth, Jesus died. He died for you, an enemy. He defeated your enemies, your enemies of devil, sin, and death. When R.I.P. is said of you when you're dead, it won't be because you were an enemy of God or someone just hoping when it's too late that you might find peace at last. Rather, peace is yours now in the forgiveness of Christ. Reconciled by Jesus, you now have the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, which will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, says Paul to the Philippians. Ruth had that peace while she was alive. Ruth now sees that peace face to face in the presence of her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, says Paul. Being justified by Jesus means the law has been completely fulfilled by him for you. Peace with God means that the Lord Jesus has taken away the discord of our sin silenced the disruption of our disobedience. R.I.P. Rest in peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And this we do even as we live. As we live, we look to the cross, the cross of Jesus, and we consider our own death. You can say that dying in Jesus is character building, the character of Jesus. Because in your baptism you have already died in Jesus, says Paul in chapter 6. Jesus has made his death your death. Life will include suffering in this world, that's a reality. But even when we suffer, such suffering produces endurance, which produces character, which produces hope. And we all need hope in a dying world. Hope is our Savior, Jesus Christ, his cross and resurrection. So the season of Lent again presses towards the cross of Jesus, where we see his most unrestful, unpeaceful death take place. There he reconciled the world for you, for me, for Ruth. Between the Father and you, he reconciled. He takes you, your place, in your death. Which will result in your justification, in your rejoicing, even in suffering, in endurance, in character and hope. Through Jesus' rest in a borrowed grave, you can find comfort 
in knowing that Jesus knows what it is like to rest in peace. Completely, perfectly, quietly rest in peace for you, as he did for Ruth. When a redeemed person of God is dying, and if it's possible, if the pastor can be present, usually these final words of a familiar hymn may be sung. Lord, let at last thine angels come to Abram's bosom bear me home, that I may die unfearing, and in its narrow chamber keep my body safe in peaceful sleep until thy reappearing. Yes, the Lord has answered Ruth's prayer. My body safe in peaceful sleep. Finally, you will have rest from your unjustified, indefensible sins, your weaknesses in sinning and your disbelief. Being called straightforward a sinner, without compare, struggling with the animosity towards God and an enemy to God, but now forgiven, forgiven of all your sins. And yes, we, as we confess every week and also today as we did, there is a resurrection of the body, your body, that body, will be raised to life everlasting. Those confessed words are peaceful words. Those words are filled with hope and are worth inscribing in faith on the tombstone. Yes, even yours and mine. Wherever we may be buried, whatever may mark our graves, may it be polished marble or just weathered wood, if our lives have been marked with the cross of Christ, we will surely rest in peace. So today, Paul celebrates the end of world war. And we rest in peace because Jesus ended that world war. For Ruth, for you and me, R.I.P. We rejoice in the peace of Jesus, dear Lord, dear people of God. Fear not because you can't rest in his peace. Amen. May this peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please stand as we continue with prayer. Let us pray to the Lord our God and Father who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised into immortality and incorruption to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Give to you the family of Ruth and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Give courage and faith to the, the bereaved that within the communion of your church, they may have strength to meet the days ahead and in the assurance of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our thanks for Ruth and for all the blessings you bestowed on her in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with her we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also. That neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
as we hear the soloist sing the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with a certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a, a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May God the Father who created this body, may God the Son who by his blood redeemed this body, May God, the Holy Spirit, who by holy baptism sanctified this body to be his temple, keep these remains to the day of the resurrection of all flesh. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, you destroyed death. By his rest in the tomb, you sanctified the graves of your saints. By his bodily resurrection, you brought life and immortality to light, so that all who die in him abide in peace and hope. Receive our thanks for the victory over death and the grave, that he has won for us. Keep us in everlasting communion with all who wait for him on earth and with all in heaven who are with him. For he is the resurrection and the life, even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Remain standing while we sing the closing hymn, A Rock of Ages Cleft for Me, 761. What will happen now is that uh, during that hymn, uh, the casket with the family will be processing out um, and going then going downstairs where you can meet and greet the family and, and express your condolences. You're all invited to lunch at that time. So um, please remain in church till the, the last verse of that hymn is sung and then you can come down uh, and greet the family, enjoy lunch together and fellowship. God's peace to you. We sing our closing hymn, 761.